Now I would say, this is pretty creative. A cardboard box that is kind of form-fitted to what's in the cardboard box. With the amount of tape that is on this box, especially on the side that they customized, I want to say they used a whole roll or two. Hey everybody, what's going on? You know who I am. I got an unboxing to do, so I'm going to get right to it. Got my cutting device here. And I'm going to try to undo all of this tape here without uh, messing anything up. So let's get right to the cutting. getting there. I tell you what, that was pretty creative. Here we have a very, very, very large uh, Roadrunner case. A little scuffed up. What the hell is all this? Holy shit. Fender Custom Shop stickers. Uh. I have no idea who that is. Apple stickers. Jesus Christ. Monster stickers. Vans of the wall. Another monster sticker. What is this? First played. Uh, Martin and Company guitar string stickers. Audioschool.com sticker. Two Sam Ash stickers. And a bunch of, oh, three Stan Sam Ash stickers. And a bunch of Nightlife stickers. What else is in here? A couple of Epiphone stickers. A PRS sticker. Uh, yeah, this sticker is kind of all bent out of shape. Yeah, interesting here. What else? No, that's it. That's all that's in that box. So let's get to what's in. All right. The case. So I popped the locks. I was kind of thinking that the one lock that has a key to it would have been locked, locked, and uh, you know they'll probably send me the key in the mail or something, or I would have to break the lock to get into it. But uh, it was unlocked, so it's a nice case. A little bit scuffed up. I mean, it's got some. I can clean that up probably pretty easy. Let's see what's inside of here. If I can do this without knocking it over onto the floor. Oh, she's beautiful. She's dirty. I mean, like, really, 
really, really dirty, but not, not messed up. Looks like I might have to take the electronics. See, this is the kind of knobs I wish I had on the other guitar. Now, this is a fitted guitar or case for this. Yeah, she's, uh, she looks pretty damn good. Besides being pretty filthy. All right, so let's see what's the back look like. Nice flame maple. No broken bits on the neck. And there's a little bit of a, eh, maybe a little crack right there, but doesn't look like anything's pulling away. No dents in the neck. No scarf joint. Grover tuners, which are pretty oxidized. No cracks on each side of the neck. Let's see how straight the neck is. Get the angle of the body in the neck. She looks pretty straight to me. And I'm kind of looking down the neck myself right now. Nice flame maple on the sides. Doesn't look like the body's bowed in any way. I mean, it does have a hump in the center of it. Nothing around the edges showing any stress or cracking or breaking. Now, is this a semi-hollow or is this a hollow-hollow? Oh, I can't see inside there. Maybe I can get my finger inside there. I can't get my finger in there. No, I think this is a hollow hollow. I think this is a hollow hollow body. So what she is, there's the sticker inside there. Joe Pass, Epiphone Joe Pass, Emperor 2. Other than the body, like this over here, like a smudge mark. I'm sure the bridge has to be relocated. The bridge floats because I moved it. Yeah. Pickups, a little bit uh, oxidation on them. Pick card can use a good polishing. Fret ends are oh, just a little bit sharp here. On this side, it's a little sharp. I'll have to take care of that. Frets themselves, I don't notice any bad wear in them. Yeah, well, maybe a little bit on the first fret I can see, unless that polishes out. Sometimes you get the string marks in the fret, but not so much the dimple in it. Yeah. So that's the Emperor. The Emperor. And uh, see if I can get inside the little case over cover over here. Oh, so we have a pick, a Sam Ash medium, and we have the keys to the case. Ooh. And the rope runner case, no one took the plastic off of the. Roadrunner emblem. See, now that makes it look like it's brand new. Ooh. Yeah. So, this is going to be interesting to work on. I got, thank God I have my measuring tool. You know, you measure from the nut to the 12th fret and from the 12th fret. So, I know the location of where that bridge is going to go. And it looks like a rosewood. Rosewood Bridge. Not so much of a real good flaming on the top like there is on the back and the sides. But I'm kind of liking this. It's a little bit on the thick side, you know. 
you can see the flaming inside of you, inside of there. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I didn't even notice this. This is kind of nice. The way they ended the fretboard here. Unreal. So, Zip, what do you think? Hey, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And, uh, that is a huge fucking headstock. Besides being dirty, I mean, this thing... The corners of the headstock are fine. A little piece of plastic right here. And missing some gold screws for the truss rod cover. Somebody probably forgot to put those on. Wow. Okay. Any push and pull? No, I don't think with these these knobs, I don't think you can. And they move pretty good. They don't feel like they're scratchy or <coughs> messed up in any way. Switch stays in the position that you put it in, so a little poker chip on there. Uh, yeah. Alrighty, folks. That's it for now. This will be another uh, this will be on the bench. Now, she's got a big ass. <laughs>